Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Saturday, March 12th, 2022. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Today we reach the very heart of the Torah, those five books of Moses that are, comprise the law of Moses. Today we're going to be reading about the most important holy day in the entire religious or Jewish religious year. That day was the Day of Atonement. It was a day filled with pictures pointing the people to the seriousness of their sin and to the reality that their sin could not be removed without the shedding of blood. It also was pointing them ahead to the Savior, who would be the perfect sacrifice for those sins. We're going to see the sins being sent out into the wilderness on the head of the uh, scapegoat. Um, so many pictures pointing us to the Savior and reminding us not only of the seriousness of our own sins, but also of the reality that in Christ all of our sins have been washed away through the sacrifice of his life on the cross. The Lord spoke to Moses after the death of two of Aaron's sons when they approached the presence of the Lord and died. The Lord said to Moses, tell your brother Aaron that he may not come whenever he wants into the holy place behind the curtain in front of the mercy seat on the ark, or else he will die, because I appear in the cloud above the mercy seat. Aaron is to enter the most holy place in this way, with a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He is to wear a holy linen tunic, and linen undergarments are to be on his body. He is to tie a linen sash around him and wrap his head with a linen turban. These are holy garments. He must bathe his body with water before he wears them. He is to take from the Israelite community two male goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. Aaron will present the bull for his sin offering and make atonement for himself and his household. Next, he will take the two goats and place them before the Lord at the entrance to the tent of meeting. After Aaron casts lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other for an uninhabitable place, he is to present the goat chosen by lot for the Lord and sacrifice it as a sin offering. But the goat chosen by lot for an uninhabitable place is to be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement with it by sending it into the wilderness for an uninhabitable place. When Aaron presents the bull for his sin offering and makes atonement for himself and his household, he will slaughter the bull for his sin offering. Then he is to take a fire pan full of blazing coals from the altar before the Lord and two handfuls of finely ground fragrant incense and bring them inside the curtain. He is to put the incense on the fire before the Lord so that the cloud of incense covers the mercy seat that is over the testimony or else he will die. He is to take some of the bull's blood and sprinkle it with his finger against the east side of the mercy seat. Then he will sprinkle some of the blood with his finger before the mercy seat seven times. When he slaughters the male goat for the people's sin offering and brings its blood inside the curtain, he will do the same with its blood as he did with the bull's blood. He is to sprinkle it against the mercy seat and in front of it. He will make atonement for the most holy place in this way for all their sins because of the Israelites' impurities and rebellious acts. He will do the same for the tent of meeting that remains among them because it is surrounded by their impurities. No one may be in the tent of meeting from the time he enters to make atonement in the most holy place until he leaves after he has made atonement for himself, his household, and the whole assembly of Israel. Then he will go out to the altar that is before the Lord and make atonement for it. He is to take some of the bull's blood and some of the goat's blood and put it on the horns on all sides of the altar. He is to sprinkle some of the blood on it with his finger seven times to cleanse and set it apart from the Israelites' impurities. When he has finished making atonement for the most holy place, the tent of meeting, and the altar, he is to present the live male goat. Aaron will lay both his hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the Israelites' iniquities and rebellious acts, all their sins. 
He is to put them on the goat's head and send it away into the wilderness by the man appointed for the task. The goat will carry all their iniquities into a desolate land, and the man will release it there. Then Aaron is to enter the tent of meeting, take off the linen garments he wore when he entered the most holy place, and leave them there. He will bathe his body with water in a holy place and put on his clothes. Then he must go out and sacrifice his burnt offering and the people's burnt offering. He will make atonement for himself and for the people. He is to burn the fat of the sin offering on the altar. The man who released the goat for an uninhabitable place is to wash his clothes and bathe his body with water. Afterward, he may re-enter the camp. The bull for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought into the most holy place to make atonement, must be brought outside the camp and their hide, flesh, and waste burned. The one who burns them is to wash his clothes and bathe himself with water. Afterward, he may re-enter the camp. This is to be a permanent statute for you. In the seventh month, on the 10th day of the month, you are to practice self-denial and to do no work, both the native and the alien who resides among you. Atonement will be made for you on this day to cleanse you, and you will be clean from all your sins before the Lord. It is a Sabbath of complete rest for you, and you must practice self-denial. It is a permanent statute. The priest who is anointed and ordained to serve as high priest in place of his father will make atonement. He will put on the linen garments, the holy garments, and make atonement for the most holy place. He will make atonement for the tent of meeting and the altar, and will make atonement for the priests and all the people of the assembly. This is to be a permanent statute for you, to make atonement for the Israelites once a year because of all their sins. And all this was done as the Lord commanded Moses. Our psalm for today is another psalm written by King David. We're going to read Psalm 19. Everybody by nature has a knowledge that God exists. And the psalmist today, King David, is going to show us that the heavens declare the glory of God. People can know from looking at creation that God exists. But this natural knowledge from creation is not enough to show people everything about God. It certainly is not enough to show people his grace, his mercy, and how he carried out his plan of salvation through his son, Jesus. For that, we need the written word of God. And in Psalm 19, David also praises God for his written word which gives us the wisdom that we need. Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the expanse proclaims the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour out speech. Night after night, they communicate knowledge. There is no speech. There are no words. Their voice is not heard. Their message has gone out to the whole earth and their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, he has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming from his home. It rejoices like an athlete running a course. It rises from one end of the heavens and circles to the other end. Nothing is hidden from its heat. The instruction of the Lord is perfect, renewing one's life. The testimony of the Lord is trustworthy making the inexperienced wise. The precepts of the Lord are right, making the heart glad. The command of the Lord is radiant, making the eyes light up. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are reliable and altogether righteous. They are more desirable than gold, than an abundance of pure gold, and sweeter than honey, dripping from a honeycomb. In addition, your servant is warned by them, and in keeping them, there is an abundant reward. Who perceives his unintentional sins? Cleanse me from my hidden faults. Moreover, keep your servant from willful sins. Do not let them rule me. Then I will be blameless and cleansed from blatant rebellion. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. 
The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.